Greetings, everybody. So today I want to talk about strategy in light of the New York Times article that came out uh, yesterday that self-driving cars are going to take forever to come to market, paraphrasing loosely, uh, thought by almost everyone, save Elon Musk and some sort of combination of big data, which I my thinking tends to go that way. But regardless, here's the thing. We do not know exactly what's going to happen as this future unfolds. What we do know is that the rules of the game have changed. That is absolutely for sure. Our competition is no longer the guy who's doing the same thing down the street, but rather coming directly from market, from industries seemingly different from our own. So any strategy, any strategy that is born out of an understanding of the world as it was before, even if it's forward looking, if it's still rooted in the past, it's already getting born. It's already born with an expiration date. And so this is why it's so critically important to understand what the business models of the future are and positioning strategy vis-a-vis -vis that future as opposed to the past. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to throw everything that you've ever done out the window, that your good thinking that got you to here and to be successful isn't valid or wasn't valid or some pieces of it won't continue to be true. That said, what it does mean is that this is an open invitation for you to really examine your assumptions about what is happening in your market, who your competitors are, and how business is going to be impacted moving forward. Some examples lately from education where we're starting to see this bubble up for the first time in, I think it's you know over a decade, certainly 15 years, I think was a stat. Uh, Harvard University, Harvard Business School, and Chicago Booth have decided not to, across the board, increase tuition because they're having a hard time recruiting students. This is, while seemingly um, perhaps not that big of a deal for higher education, this is like huge because they're noticing that the trend in the marketplace toward people going or not going to MBA is starting to shift. In the face of that, and sort of in parallel, parallel to that, um, Lake Forest, which is an MBA program also in Chicago, is doing some amazing stuff in terms of creating absolutely tailor-made, customized MBA-type education and selling it into large corporations. They're doing phenomenal work. So these things are happening in parallel. And so as the education market is looking for where big money is going to continue to come from, this is going to be a thing to watch. But all these things based on the assumption or moving away from the assumption that the MBA as it stands is the key to whatever it is that's coming next. So how is it that we look at this piece of strategy and re-examine our assumptions? The first piece, well, as you know, my thoughts and theories about the future of work are all rooted in mindset, education, and collaboration. And the mindset piece is looking at our assumptions about everything. What are market factors? What are the economic models that we're using to project future performance? As we look at what happened with Netflix this past week and their stock price is down because their subscriptions or projected subscriptions fell, is there something new happening in the marketplace? Were guesses just off or projections just off or are there other underlying dynamics occurring there? And that kind of investigation into assumptions is oftentimes done better with people who are not inside your organization. Why? Because someone from outside doesn't care, frankly, about the, the sacred cows. What they're gonna be looking for is helping you support your growth and your understanding of what's coming down the line for the future. Education, again, looking at what industries are in ascension and decline, and more interestingly, having a really good look at how extenuating market circumstances could be coming in to offer up some massive competition, right? So in an article today in, in the New York Times, um, as we're looking at Renault and Nissan and them coming together, what, um, who are the competitors that they're listing? They're listing Google and Uber, not other car manufacturers. So things are shifting. And then third, of course, collaboration. How are you going to collaborate with, as I've spoken about before, mutually assured thriving with competitors? How do you leverage each other's resources to confront a common market challenge so that everybody is assured to thrive, but then also, and interestingly, I think for much larger organizations, 
looking at how teams collaborate with each other to meet market needs in a much more nimble sort of way. And this moves beyond sort of an agile approach and it moves into understanding teams in terms of sort of biological function or biological cells and how these kinds of systems can interact with each other. Now there's a lot of content there, but basically if we're gonna bring this down to its bare bones, here's the deal. The rules of the game have changed. Any planning that we do as leaders, as <laughs> chief officers, as leaders of smaller teams or more junior teams, any planning that we do that is rooted in past assumptions already has an expiration date. So get clear on what those assumptions are and start planning for the future. How are your plans going? I wanna know, type here in the comments and here's to the freedom to create the lives you want.